Well, I guess we start. I see Andy's picture on the wall over there, and I've got Andy right here next to me. So, Andy, we are delighted to have you here uh, with us. Uh, uh, U.S. Amateur and first-time Masters participant. So that's very, very special. Uh, we welcome you to the press building and certainly to the tournament. Um, Andy joins um, us as a 2019 U.S. Amateur champion, an accolade which he shares with Bobby Jones, co-founder of this tournament and this course. You also share Another thing with him, you both went to Georgia Tech. That's right. And uh, have you thought about that connection any? A lot, yeah. Um, you know, going to Georgia Tech, my first few years, we actually wore Bobby Jones clothing. And uh, so that was like a super big deal to us. Um, the legacy of Bobby Jones still lives on at Georgia Tech. Um, when you speak of Georgia Tech golf, you think Bobby Jones. And uh, to be at the place that he co-founded with Mr. Roberts is just super special. And um, yeah, I mean, I just, I'm glad to be on the list of Georgia Tech alums to be able to play in this tournament. Well, we, we are just delighted to have you here, uh, particularly bringing the state of Georgia once again to this tournament is good. Uh, now let's have a few questions. Uh, Colin Cody uh, from WABS, uh, do you have a question? Yes, um, Andy, so we don't see a lot of Mississippians here. Uh, how does that make you feel to represent the state like that? Yeah, it's super cool. I think I was the first player to ever win the USAM from Mississippi. Uh, there's a lot of really good players that are up and coming from Mississippi. Just to name a few, you have me, Davis Riley, um, Wilson Fur, Braden Thornberry, who won the national championship a, few, a couple years ago, um, Jonathan Randolph, who's on the Corn Ferry Tour. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And so I think um, Mississippi golf was kind of falling off for a while. And now it's getting back to, uh, it's, it's crazy how it kind of comes in waves. You have players that are, become really good, push other players. And I think um, you know, Mississippi's done a great job with their junior program. I grew up playing in the Mississippi Junior Golf Association tournaments and, um, you know, I think those tournaments have helped all of us. We obviously went on to, to play the different junior tours like the AJGA and SJGT, things like that, and then eventually just to amateur golf. But um, getting started in Mississippi and having good golf courses to play was definitely what helped me um, become a good player and get to college and develop my talents there. John Steinbrenner from the masters.com. John, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. I was just wondering what <laughs> it's been, you've talked about it before, but <clears> just to <throat> expound a little bit on what this year has been like and, you know, your plans with, you know, when you'd won in 19 to play masters, play US Open, play an open championship and then turn pro and how COVID-19 has kind of turned that all upside down. So I'd just be curious sort of what's been going on in your life and how, you, uh, how you've sort of gotten through this yeah. interesting um, stage. It's obviously been a um, crazy time. A lot of people have lost a lot. So um, I know my problems are a lot smaller than a lot of people's problems, but I, I will say I've given up a lot of stuff to be able to, to play in this tournament. And um, I'm not going to take this week for granted. I originally planned to turn pro right after the national championship um, because I graduated this past May. So I was going to turn pro right after the national championship. Um, the Memorial would have been my first pro event. The U.S. Open changed the rule to where I could have played the U.S. Open as a pro. They're calling that the Victor Hovland rule now. So, um, yeah, I mean, in a normal year, <clears throat> sorry, normal year, you would have thought I would have got a decent amount of sponsor exemptions after the U.S. Open and then tried to play well enough to get my card. So, um, I had to delay the process of turning pro and, um, but like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up any chance to play the masters as an amateur for anything. Um, if I had to wait till next year, I was going to do it. So I just think this is such a special week. Um, this tournament, you know, getting to play here as an amateur is super special. I can't wait for the amateur dinner. I can't wait to stay in the crow's nest and I just want to have all like the whole experience and 
um, thankfully we're getting to play and, you know, looking forward to, to getting out there. That's good. Steve Hummer from the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, and he lives in Atlanta now, so I'm sure you have a question. <laughs> I'm sure I do. Yes, thanks. Uh, so you are staying in the crow's nest. That's uh, that's all open and open for business. Yeah. So this year they're doing it a little different. Um, normally all the amateurs stay up there together for social distancing. This year they're doing one person per night. So I'm going to stay on Wednesday night after the amateur dinner. Um, I'll stay up there before the first round. And, you know, if it's if it's open another night, I might try to stay there again. Um yeah, if you, yeah, well, yeah, make the cut, and, and who knows, on the weekend, yeah. Uh, who all is here with you from family or from tech? Um, so my dad is my swing coach this week, so he's here with me. My mom is my plus one. Um, all the players are allowed a plus one. So, um, And then my grandmother's going to come over. She's my, she's my chef this week. So <laughs> she's, she's the best cook I know, so we... Uh, asked if she would come hang out, you know, just to give me a little bit more comfort back home at our house this week and uh, just trying to be as comfortable as possible. And can I ask you, how, how is the state of your game and what have you been doing to try to keep it sharp here between? Uh... Yeah, so I actually um, got to play in a few tour events this summer. I played in Colonial. I played in Hilton Head. I played Memorial U.S. Open. And then I threw in a couple amateur events in there as well. I played the Western Am and the U.S. Am. So I uh, actually had a pretty busy schedule. I uh, felt like my game, I, I started out at Colonial. I was putting really bad. Um, so I worked really hard on my ball striking, um, kind of neglected my short game and felt like I haven't really put it all together. Going into the U.S. Open, I was feeling really good. I was, um, felt like I was hitting it better, felt like I was putting it well, chipping it well, and um, just kept missing fairways by like one yard, and, you know, at wing foot, one yard is the same as 20. So uh, the, fair, the rough was super deep. You'd had to lay up to a lot of full wedges if you were, you know, one yard in the fairway or 20 yards in the fairway didn't really matter. But um, not an excuse, but I just needed to play better. And um, this week, I feel like my game's really come together. I've worked really hard the past few weeks on my swing with my coach, Tony Ruggiero. Um, you know, I just feel like everything's kind of trending in the right direction. I'm hitting my driver well. My irons feel like uh, they've gotten a lot better. And I've been putting really well since the U.S. Open. So I feel like everything's kind of peaking at the right time. Do I have time for one more? This the, sure, go ahead. The, the prospect of playing with Tiger. And, and yeah. how, much does that, how much has that been uh, sitting on your mind for all these months? Yeah, it didn't really. I guess, you know, right after I won the USAM, I thought about it a lot. You know, you imagine the big crowds, you imagine playing with Tiger, you imagine the roars, you imagine people running up and getting to see Tiger and then running the next hole after he taps in, stuff like that. Um, the past few weeks, it's become a lot more real that I'm actually playing with him, not necessarily thinking about the crowds and the experience. It's more of just like playing in, um, you know, the same arena as Tiger. So I've thought about it a lot. Um, you know, growing up, obviously, I was a super, super big Tiger fan. Like a lot of people here, um, he's kind of the reason that golf is considered cool, you know. Um, there's, he's the reason a lot of people watch golf. He makes golf, you know, what it is today. And um, so I think just to be paired with him is awesome. I mean, he was definitely an inspiration to me early on in the game. And um, I don't know how much we'll talk. I don't know how much you know, interaction we'll have, but just to play, you know, that's good enough to me. <laughs> Let's go to Adam Shupak with Golf Week magazine. Adam? Yeah, Andy, just wondering, what would your plans have been for the par three contest in terms of caddy, et cetera, who we might have played with? I don't know. Um, I think some people have rotated caddies through if I'm right, I could be wrong there, but I think people have taken multiple caddies and letting them do like three holes a piece. So I don't know. I I could have, I have two brothers, so maybe let one, <laughs> one of them caddy for three holes, the other caddy for three holes, and my dad caddy for three holes or something. I don't really know. Uh, 
as far as practice rounds this week, are you are you getting together with like a Matt Kuchar who went to Georgia Tech like you and played as a U.S. amateur champ, or or what? Do you, who, anybody you're trying to pick the yeah, brain? Um, I haven't really set up any practice rounds the last couple of days. Um, I've played with Lucas Glover. We uh, we joined up with Andrew Putnam today, and uh, the three of us all played. And uh, Nate Lashley was with us as well. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have any plans per se. If someone, you know, asks me to play or I feel like they're kind of hinting at that, then I'll definitely ask. But I don't want to, um, you know, I'm not really just like fangirling over playing with anyone. Uh, I'm just really focused on what I'm doing. And if I'm playing a practice round by myself or with someone, that's that's fine with me. In in Atlanta, how, many, how much have you gotten over here to, to play the course? Yeah, I've probably played Augusta National, including today. I think I've played 11 times, but a few times have been just nine holes. So um, I feel really comfortable around the place. I feel like the first few times I came, um, fortunate enough, we get to play, play one time a year at Georgia Tech. So um, that was, you know, always the coolest day of the year for college kids. Get, <laughs> wake up super early on a Saturday morning, drive down. Uh, we would get here, you know, eight, nine o'clock, eat breakfast, go hit like 10 balls and you're off to the first tee and you're at Augusta National. It was always just the most beautiful mornings. We usually played um, February or March. And uh, so it was always, you know, super cool. But you get five holes in and before you realize you're playing golf, you're just looking around and, oh, so-and-so hit a shot there. So-and-so hit a shot there. Um, so you go... You, you start on one, two, three, you want to make a couple birdies. And uh, the first few times I played, I was well over par through five, six holes before I actually started, you know, playing golf and not just taking it all in. So I think the more that I've been here, the more comfortable I've gotten of getting into the round early. Um, the last couple of days, I've tried to keep score. I've tried to just kind of get into my, my tournament mode, I guess you could call it, um, trying to just get into that mindset of playing golf instead of just, you know, taking in the whole experience. And I think by Thursday I'll get there, but it's hard to not uh, wander and let your mind think about, uh, oh, you know, there's so much history around this place and uh, all the stories you've heard and all the shots that you've seen on TV, it's hard to not, you know, think about some of that stuff. But I've got to just get into shot by shot and play a golf tournament on Thursday. Chris Fiblemore from the Journal Constitution. Chris, do you have a question? Sure do, thanks. W when you come here to prepare for a tournament, is it, are you working more on putting, short game around the greens? Is there a specific area for this course? Yeah, are you talking about preparing back home? No, oh, now that you're here, you're gonna play the tournament. Now that I'm here, um, so the last couple of days, the, the fringes haven't been cut as low as I think they'll be. So I've been trying to really pick and choose what pitch shots I'm hitting. I don't want to hit a lot of bank shots into the hill right now because I know the grass is a little longer than it's going to be. And I think it's going to scale a little bit more when it comes Thursday. But um, all the pitch shots that are, are landing on the green, I've tried to hit um, all the ones that I think that I could possibly have this week. I mean, you know, it's hard, it's hard to know exactly where you're going to hit it, but you know where the good miss is. So I've tried to hit all those shots. Um, lag putting. The greens are pretty quick right now. You can kind of see they're getting a little bit of brown crust to them. And uh, I know we're going to get some rain, soften them up a little bit, but they, you know, the sub air systems here and they're, they're capable of getting them firm. So I don't think the greens are going to, they're definitely not going to slow up, but um, they're probably not as fast as they're going to be on Thursday, but you can still see kind of what, what the ball is going to do all around the long lag putts and the, the ridges. You kind of know, you know, what part of the ridge is softer than the other, you know, the high points, trying to just putt over the ridges, basically. Um, and then on the practice screen, you want to hit a lot of, you know, five, six footers that break a lot. Um, you're not going to hit every lag putt close. You're not going to chip everything close. So you're probably going to have some big breakers that are under 10 feet and you need, you need to make some of those to keep your momentum going. So I think uh, lag putting and, Chipping that's not banking into the hill is super important right now. Andy, we have the capacity to receive remote questions from people who are not in the room. I have one here. 
You've had a chance to play in several PGA Tour events and the U.S. Open in the lead up to the Masters. How do you feel these events prepared you for this week? Yeah, that's a great question. Kind of something I wanted to talk about, too. Um, I learned a lot playing in those tour events, and I feel like, you know, all those different learning experiences have prepared me for this moment. And uh, I know if I play well at the Masters, it just jumpstarts my career even more than winning the USAM. So uh, I've tried to really learn from those events. It, you know, there's the, the saying, it's not losing, it's learning. Um, I haven't played well. I've learned a lot, and I feel like um, now that my game feels like it's in a good spot, I can play well and use all the things that I've learned, you know, especially at the U.S. Open. Major championship golf is just different than any other type of golf. So um, if you get in a bad spot, you really have to take your medicine. You know, one shot's not that big a deal. Two shots is a lot, a lot uh, tougher than, you know, going through college playing amateur golf. It's you know, two shots, you know, we're going to make an eagle on the next hole, whatever. But nowadays, two shots is a lot different. So um, really just try to keep the momentum going, get in a bad spot, pitch it out, you know, move on. But, um, yeah, those those opportunities have really prepared me for, for Augusta National, I think. And um, I was just super fortunate to get to play those as an amateur and not having to play those as a as a professional trying to play for my card. That question dealt with your experience. I have another question, which is remote. What is the best advice that you have received on how to approach this course? This course in particular? Um, gosh, that's a good question too. I've gotten a lot of advice. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of the advice, advice was about the crowd and handling nerves and things like that. But I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much of that there'll be. I'd, I'll definitely be a little nervous before the first round. But uh, I just think the, the best advice that I've gotten for any big tournament is to run towards the pressure. You know, you prepare your whole life for moments like this. Um, since I was four years old, I've been preparing to get to a place like this and to have these type of opportunities. So. Uh, I need to run towards that pressure, you know, want that pressure. If, you, if you're nervous, if you have pressure, that means you've done something good. So uh, I've just always been a believer in, you know, wanting to have, you know, nerves and wanting to have pressure and embracing it. You know, everybody, everyone feels it. It's not that it's something wrong with you if you feel nervous. So uh, just having that mindset going in, I feel like gives me a little bit of an advantage. Other questions from the room? Adam. Is your hometown doing anything special? Uh, is there like a watch party? Is, is and who's running? Yeah, who's... I, I don't really know. I haven't talked to a lot of people. Um, trying to stay off my phone as much as I can. I know there's a lot of outside distractions that can go on, but uh, I'm sure there'll there'll definitely be some watch parties. I'm sure. Um, I don't really know of anything specific that they're doing, but um, I know my one of my brothers is there, and I'm sure he'll have his crew uh, watching, but. I don't, I don't know of any in particular. John, you've got a question in the back? Oh, yes, sir. I may actually have two, if that's okay. Uh, I'm that's curious, all right. uh, what, what happens after this in terms of uh, staying amateur, turning pro, waiting for the Walker Cup and the Seminole? I mean, what are your, look, looking ahead, what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, um, it's funny. to turn pro, I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, I plan on turning pro at some point after the Masters, um, trying to see what all of my options are at this point. I know the Walker Cup was one of the coolest weeks of my life and definitely a great experience. Um, winning over there was, was super cool. I think winning um, here in America would be even cooler. So um, I don't know. I've talked to Nathaniel Crosby, who's the captain, and um, – I've, I've kind of told him where I was at if I uh, trying to get some sponsor invites into tournaments, to be quite honest with you. Um, so hopefully we can get some of those lined up. And if so, then I'll, I'll plan to turn pro. If not, we'll, we'll see what the, all the options are. You had another question, John? Yes, yeah, so I'm just curious what you've been doing, and I apologize that this is well known in terms of once you graduated, again, with 
the way the year has gone and everything else. You've been living in Atlanta. You've been working on your golf mostly. You've been doing other things. Um, just how you're occupying your time. Are you working outside of golf or you just been concentrating? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, once you graduate college, the first few months are kind of weird. You've gone four years of your life. You know, you have a set schedule from, for us, it was 5.45 in the morning until I went to sleep. So, you know, at 5.45, we were at workouts. At 8 o'clock, you had class. You got out at 12. You go to the golf course. You stay at the golf course until traffic dies down. And then we would go back home and do homework until we went to bed. So that was every day in Atlanta um, at Georgia Tech. And then you get out of college and you're like, wow, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I've already worked out. You know, what am I going to do for the rest of the day? So um, definitely been – I've definitely been practicing. I don't want to say too much, but it's easy to just get out there and um, practice too much because I didn't really know what else to do. I mean, that was just all I've done for four years is um, I get done with school and I'm going to practice until dark. So now that I don't have school, it's, it's how I occupy my time. I don't really have any hobbies or pastimes. You know, golf is what I want to do and um, I would hate to feel like I didn't put everything I had into it. So, um, yeah, good question. But I've pretty much just been waking up, working out, practicing, and going back to bed. So uh, there hasn't been uh, – it's definitely not a lack of effort. And, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm prepared. Last question, just if, if you don't mind your grandmother, what do you call her? Do you, do you have a granny, grandma? Do you have a, a name that you all call her? And, and what, is her, what is her cooking specialty that she's going to be? Yeah, for you? <laughs> that's funny. She, uh, we call her Memo. It's my mom's mother. It's my only grandparent that I have left here with us. So um, super close with her. She grew up like two miles down the road from where I live. So, um, yeah, super good relationship with her and, she, uh, they have a huge garden at her house. My whole family kind of helps out with it. So, um, yeah, she'll, uh, she'll bring some homegrown vegetables and, uh, she'll, I'm, I assume she'll bring her skillet with her. So, uh, looking forward to eating some food. Other questions from the room? Colin, did you have one? Yeah. Did yes. I see you raise your hand back? Yes. Then? Uh, Andy, did you ever think you would be here in November playing uh, fall Masters? Just talk to me about that. What did you see out there on the course today? Yeah, uh, it's definitely interesting. Um, if I thought I would be here in November playing the Masters, probably not. <laughs> uh, it's never happened before, so I don't think anyone envisioned it before, before the year. But, you know, I remember getting a phone call, um, I guess it was, what, February? 12th or March 12th when the world shut down the national championship was canceled all fall, all spring sports were canceled um, definitely a low point in my life you know we felt like we had a really good team at Georgia Tech last year we had three seniors um, that had played every tournament together so we were all super disappointed how it how it ended for us um, kind of it's easy to feel sorry for yourself and kind of feel like, oh, you know, so much is lost. But um, there was there was rumors of maybe playing the Masters in November, and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. <laughs> um, I've actually – I was here practicing on the same dates. I was here the same weekend as we're playing this year, last year. So uh, super ironic, and I never would have thought I'd been playing the Masters a year from then. But uh, it's pretty cool. Michael, did you have a question? You just Oh, thank you us. very much. Michael just, Bamberger with Golf Magazine and Golf.com. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, I was curious to know what you studied at Georgia Tech and uh, uh, and if it's going to be useful to you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I studied business, uh, business administration. I just did general business. So um, uh, I think it'll be useful. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'll be successful in this. But uh, just having that business mindset and, you know, professional golf, you're your own CEO. So I think uh, it'll definitely serve me well going forward. Thank you. Other questions from the room? 
Well, Andy, it looks like uh, that's the end of the interview, but we all want to congratulate you for what you've accomplished so far and wish you the very, very best of luck thank here you. at the Masters, your first it. Masters. Good luck and thank you. Thanks. Great to be here.